Now let's launch this IDE, STM32 Cube IDE. So now when you launch that IDE, so it will always ask you to open the workspace. Let's create a new workspace. So and select the appropriate path. And after that, give a workspace name. Let me give the workspace name as target. So this is a workspace name. And then click on launch. So here it is. So the a workspace is created. So this is a workspace name. So here you are going to keep all your projects, different projects, what you create for your embedded target. So now creating your very first project is very, very simple. So either you can click over here, start new project or click on file new STM32 project. So let's do that. So now let's wait for target selector. So now it will ask you to select the target. So it also does some network activities in between. So if it is doing some network activities, then let it happen. Don't cancel it. So here you can see that this is a target selection where you have to select STM32 microcontroller or STM32 board. There are two important selection. One is board selection and another one is MCU selection. If you are using standard boards produced by ST such as uh, discovery boards, nucleo boards or evaluation boards, then you can go with board selection. So, but if you have any custom board designed by you or designed by some other vendor, so uh, which has STM32 microcontroller, then you can go with MCU selector. So board selector is only for those boards which are produced by ST Microelectronics. In this course, we'll be using STM32 F407 discovery board. I would go with board selector. So just type the name of the board STM32 F4 discovery. So here it is. So it shows all the details of the STM32 discovery board and it also gives you access to various documentation such as user manuals, application notes, schematics and various other things you can download from here and you can also download the data sheet. And if you have Nucleo, then just type Nucleo. It will start displaying all the Nucleo boards or evaluation. So STM32 F4 discovery. So let's select this and click next. And here let's give a name for our project. Let me call it as test project and select targeted language as C and targeted binary type executable and targeted project type so this you should select as empty because we are not going to use the integrated stm32 cube feature of this id so this id also has integrated stm32 cubemx software that is we use to configure various peripherals and for the automatic code generation if your goal is to do peripheral configuration and automatic code generation then you can go with STM32 cube and for this video we are going to practice using embedded C by coding from a register level so selecting STM32 cube doesn't make sense isn't it so that's why I'm going with empty so let me click finish now that's it so you just created a new project for your target and uh, it also created main.c for you where you are going to write all your code and it also created syscalls.c and sysmem.c and uh, about which we are going to explore later so now let's close this so now let's try to compile this code so for that right click and select build project and check this console tab here you can see that the build was successful this is the invocation of the cross compiler the cross compiler ran and it actually compiled your project and here you can see that the executable is created in the format .elf that is executable and linkable format. So this project will be created by default because by using this executable you can also load the binary to the target and also you can debug the binary using the debugger and all those things we are going to explore later. 
So if you want to create bin and hex, then you can do that by going to the properties. So just right click and go to the properties and go to and expand this C, C++ build, go to settings and here go to tool settings. And here you can see that MCU post build output. You can generate binary, you can generate hacks and various other things if you want. So, but I'm not going to create those things because that doesn't make sense because we want to debug our code using debugger. So the suitable format is .elf. So in the next lecture, let's learn how to create a hello world application for our embedded target. And we are going to get the prints using serial wire viewer feature of the ID. And I will show you that in the next lecture.